Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Bitcoin for the 8th of November. Okay, so this is the daily chart here. We might just pop back out to the weekly chart here for a moment. So this is what uh, I'm looking at at the moment. We can, as you may know, we can count one, two, three, four, five here because we can count five waves here. It means that we'll get another five waves up here that are not finished yet. And I'm and I'm hoping these five waves are wave one here and then wave two here and then three, four, five for a larger third wave uh, moving to the upside. I mean, many folks have been looking at this whole pattern here as a triangle pattern. And I've seen them right from the get go trying to uh, make it fit. But I just see that it's quite difficult to do that. In, I mean, you can look if we just go to the uh, monthly chart let's just do that you know I mean it does got the appearance of a you know a triangle pattern so to speak you know um, but uh, because we haven't made if we'd made a new low down here right below here then we could count this up here in three waves um, but because we haven't made a new low below here then um, it makes this all one leg here that would have to be like an A wave here and this would have to be an A and very clearly three waves here for a B wave here uh, and then a C wave up here but like I mentioned you know getting five waves out of this whole structure here really you know you really got to bend the wave count a bit to uh, to, to do that so um, yeah I just don't uh, I still can't see that I've never seen it and I can't st I can't st still see it but I see folks trying to make a triangle pattern out of it I mean at all times we of course we need to be aware and the other thing here too is that you know we're approaching the old highs here you know not so much the spikes but you always get an average of things and that would be for me that's the 15,000 because um, when I'm talking about the trading levels we talked about the 10,000 being a balance here well the next level up is the 20,000 and simply to me that doesn't matter you know it's just the Fibonacci numbers as price ratio so one two three five eight and then 13 but instead of doing it that way we go back to one again so it's just one two three five eight and then the power of 10 so 10 20 and that sort of thing so a hundred thousand in this case um so to me we're just really um having a, a correction at the fifteen thousand, and we can ex would expect that and um as always we look for um, uh, we look for, um, you know, uh, patterns at those levels as support. So we look for a classic trading levels pattern first off here as, as, uh, as if this is the 15,000 through here as the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level. And then this one here, uh, there's a variation on, on, on that theme where it doesn't come back below the level. Uh, I don't think that's the case. And the third one is the overshoot pattern where it doesn't stop here and then drops back below the level. So I think that we're actually looking at this particular pattern here, but we'll take a closer look at this in a moment, okay? So we'll come back to that. But definitely we're, we've, we've hit a brick wall at 15,000. And as a trader, it um, doesn't really matter what method you use, but in a, in a nutshell, um, most systems would give you a buying opportunity you know once the market has found support on that number and that's what really i'm looking for i'm looking for support so we'll just need to understand the correction of this particular pattern and but today we'll also have a look at the other levels around this area here that also play a part in it we could also look um we could also look at the volume actually so we can this is the monthly volume um we just We'll just go back a step further. Maybe we could just let me have a look at the yearly volume here. It's a little bit tricky to read and doesn't give us a lot of definition, but we are getting more volume here this year in 2020 that the time it finishes because we're in November, December, we'll have more volume than this. So um, we'll go to the quarterly chart and just check on, on this um quarterly 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 here so okay it's a little bit better it gives us a little bit of form in all of this and um i'll just give you 
my brief little understanding of how to read volume, and uh, Richard Wyckoff was one of the first people to really develop the relationship between price and volume, you know, because I've always seen the price and the price patterns as 50% of the technical analysis and the other half is the volume, and that makes up the complete picture. But when you're dealing with... Um, uh, with with forex um, and the same with these ones here, unless it's the futures market, well, the futures market there's ever there's, the, there's always a, for a buyer there needs to be a seller, um, so you got those matching contracts there. But when you come to the forex charts, normally the forex volume that you're looking at here is not so much the volume; it's how many they, they it's a lot more like a volume indicator of, of and and they would. Um, added up of how many times the the price has moved as as a piece of volume now that can work quite well it doesn't right it doesn't really hit the mark but and there'll be discrepancies in that but it does give you a it does do a reasonable job i have to say so um, because most people aren't trading the futures contracts uh in the in the currencies there um you know, probably CFDs and so on, or depending on what country you're in and so many different products and so on. But we can still get a general idea. And what I want to say, um, just this is a little bit in reading it, but it's like a musician reading a score of music. You know, they understand all that jargon. So uh, one thing leads to another, and that's the same with the volume and the price. So for a trend to be a trend in either direction, it needs increasing volume. So when we look at this on the quarterly chart here and we can see this market moving up here, we can see that we've got increasing volume. So the way to read the uh, volume with the chart, there's two things that you need to understand. It's the relationship between the two bars. It's the relationship between these two bars. And it's the relationship between the volume bar on that day and the price bar in that period as well. So that's the four-way split with it. Because um, it's got to have the right look and feel about it as well. Like this volume, this was increasing here nicely, wasn't it? And then we can see this increasing nicely here. And then we've had this big shoot up through here. We've had a big shoot up through here as well. Um, so we're matching the volume to the range of the bar as well. It's got to have the right look and feel about it. But for a trend to be an uptrend through here, we need to see increasing volume until we don't see increasing volume any further. So this is a trend up. And even though that this is a trend back down again, it's on lower volume. Each bar's relationship is to the next is lower volume. So that means that it's a correction. So all corrections are on lower volume. So the most common correction is a triangle. So if you looked at a triangle pattern, all the if we just considered this for a triangle pattern here, it's, it's not really, but it would be on lower volume than the previous trend. So this is a correction here. It's like this mark, this this bar moving down through here. Um, it's on lower volume, so it's 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 corrective. In 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 nature. So what I want to say is that um, yeah. So we can we can look at this here. We know that. Um, we, well, let's go in and pull this apart a little bit uh, closer now that we sort of understand that little bit. So we're on the quarterly. We'll go to the monthly here. So we know that, um, let's get this into space a little. So on the monthly chart here, we can see from, really need some crosshairs here, but this is okay. So we can see from this space uh, here, we start to get increasing volume to the upside. So this, let me just get a little, it's not much chop either. Um, so we've got really in, we've got we've seen this move up here. We've got uh, increasing volume to the upside on on this bar, and then we're seeing less volume here. But it's only the eighth in November here, so we can't really get sort of into that as well. Uh, here's a good example of of a, of, a, of a trend here where we're seeing increasing volume, decreasing volume in in this particular space here. The market's been pegged at this particular point here. Let's just go into the weekly volume and check on this a little bit again. So we can see um, we can see in this little run here, we can see that we've got increased volume here. So that's a trend because I have to point out that, um, and there's another little trend in here on this volume. I have to point out that a market can have, um, the market can go up 
and the volume can be diminishing. Now, what that means, that's divergent. So normally you would use, you would, you've been trained to look at that with indicators. You've got those two little humps. So um, you'd look, you would look at that. That's basically picking up the volume in that sense. But you don't need those little humps and draw those that divergence on the indicators because you would see it in the volume here because, um, yeah. So we, we're looking at this current weekly bar here which is just the beginning of the week, but we're seeing it on lower volume. So we could expect this, we could expect the, um, you know, it's only the be beginning of this period in time with this market trading around the clock. Um, so we would, for this to be a bearish market at this point, I would need to see more volume than this previous bar. Any less volume this week in this, then no matter what happens here or how big this gets here or how ugly it is, for it to be bullish, we need to see it on less volume than this bar here. I would only turn bearish if there was increased volume uh, and bars to the downside here. So otherwise, we're in two things here. The volume's telling me that we're still in the uptrend. The trading levels are telling me that we're just doing a little dance across the 15,000 uh, here, whatever the reason is for, for, for that. Um, let's go in and take a closer look. So in this instance here, as I may have mentioned before, we're, we're, we're still in an uptrend here. And until proven otherwise, um, we'll stay with this particular count. Um, so we'll just go to the daily chart and then we'll drill into the four hour chart and so on. So it's pretty clear here we've got one and two and three and four and five here. Uh, I know some folks have got one, two, three, four, five to this point here and looking at this as wave one and two here and then wave one and two here. Look, that's possible, but at the same time, that just creates a more bullish count. You know, so we're on the right path. We can see that this trend line from the low here to the to this low here, and bringing that across to the you know to the outside of of, of this trend here, takes us into that top of that trend line there. So there's another little reason. Well, I don't know if that's a reason, but it's um it certainly frames the picture so to speak. And um, yeah, and also when you're dealing with trend lines as well, you know, you might use the Bollinger Band, so to speak. But, you know, you, you could say that when the market's touching the trend line here, it'll be reaching the Bollinger Band anyway. You know, and when it's over this side, it'll be on the lower band. So and all the indicators would be suggesting buys here and sells here and buys over here. So that's all just normal stuff, you know. Um, so the thing about this, when I look at this trend with my eye here, if, if I had to, um, you know, if I'd, I mean, I've counted it up uh, in this particular way. I'm still looking for wave five here. But realistically, if I was, the feeling I'm getting from this, just from my intuition, is that we shouldn't really put wave three here. Wave three should be over here somewhere. And wave five uh, and four should be over here. That's what that's what my intuition is telling me. But um, I need to just tr track what I see at this stage. So I'll just stay with this particular point here but I just wanted to let you know that and, and I'll probably end up pushing it out to that point. Um, the other point here too that I want to revert back to is the trading levels um, and we'll take a closer look at all of this on the four hour chart and the tick chart and we'll nail all this down for you but um, so with the, with the power of 10, the major level, so one here being 10, because one could be one cent, 10 cents, $1, $10, $100, $1,000, $10,000, 100000 It's all trading level one to me. And then from one, using the power of 10, we would go to 20 up here. And so the medium level would be um, at the 15 here. That's the halfway mark. Now, I like to use the 13,000, um, uh, 13, because when you've got the Fibonacci numbers, you've got 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8, then 13. So I'd like to include 13 um, when it's meaningful uh, in, in certain instances like, like this, like if $13, I would use a major level. But the 13 can also be the top of group one as well. So one, two, and three of minor levels. Um, but I won't go there just yet. But I just want to point out these 
major levels in orange and the medium level. So when we've got 13 here, it's got 8, 13, but we're putting the power of going back to wave, uh, going back to the power of 10 of 1 again, because we go from 1 to 8 all the time. Um, so um, from 13, from 10 to 13, we've got a medium level in here at 1150. Now it's played out really nicely in here and it does in stocks as well, $11.50. Now we've got um, another medium level up here because we've got one at 15 and then we've got another medium level here at 1650 because that's the halfway mark between the 13 and the 20. Now this will play out as well. And I normally say to folks, 16 is important because it gets tops and turns and 17 is important because it gets tops and turns. But it's the 1650 that really creates a balance point between these two numbers and it's where we get nice trade setups there. So today I've put the 16 50 in here. Um, not that it's any use of us today because we're not near that price, but I'm just working in the future. So um, there we go at that particular point there. Um, so coming back to, oh, there's one more thing too. The 18,000 is a minor level and we call, always call eight a profit taking number. So we're going to see the bids get hit there. So just be aware of that number. And we could also bring in the um, uh, group two here. Now, group two, if you know the trading levels, will be 65 here, the 1650, 1720, so 17,720, and 18 here. That becomes all of group two here. Um, but the 18 will be the dominant number there as a minor level. So they're, they're overlapping and uh, they're sort of overlapping in the, on the same numbers, which is fine. Anyway, I just wanted to point out the, the the big numbers here that we'll be working with, but currently we're working with uh, 15,000 and we need to understand what's going on here with this. We can see that so far on this daily bar here that we've got lower volume here and the market's pushing back up to retest that 15,000. Uh, so we need to go in and check on that particular pattern and that level at this stage of the game. So uh, my original account, uh, my original count here is that um, we've got wave five and three here and four here. I really don't like that. I really don't like that. So as I mentioned before, I really think that this copy this, I really think this is up here somewhere. Um, but I can't prove that. It's just the right, just the sort of the right perspective of all of this at the moment. Um, so from this low here, if I can just um, get these things working. So from this low here, we'll count this up here as five for one and two here, and then wave three up here, wave four here, and we're looking for wave five to take us up to that 1650 uh, area, and then we'll get our ABC correction. Now, of course, this wave two can come back further than all of this, but we'll just, we're experiencing, um, because we're in the thirds of the third waves in the, in the bigger picture, um, we're just coming back to the bigger picture here for a moment. So because we're in the third of this move and the third of this move and the third of this move here, we're finding that correct, even the corrections in here have all been very shallow. OK, so I expect that shallow corrections to continue as we move higher within all of that. And that's the reason for that coming back to the four hour chart uh, here. Um, yeah, so we're looking at wave four here and wave five, four here and wave five to the upside here. We don't, don't currently have five waves moving down here. It's not to say that we won't get them. And if we do get them, well, then um, we'll be coming down further at that point. So we need to um, understand uh, that. So just before we go to the tick chart and understand this here, this particular pattern that we're looking at at the level here, because it never reacted really when it got to the 15,000, it kind of just burned straight through there. So a lot of the, a lot of, this is something else we just need to go over here as well, is there's not a lot that can actually happen at at a at a price point at a large number 
Um, in the old days, they call them the sticky numbers, but um, there's not a lot that happened because what could happen is the market could come up to a number and drop and never come back, or it can just continue and you know never look never look back as well. But if it's going to have a correction here, then we know that um, the patterns that we're looking at, and because it never had a reaction from the fifteen thousand, then we really need to use the overshoot pattern, which is this one here that I mentioned. And with this one here, it doesn't stop at the level. It just burns straight through there because of momentum or whatever. Um, and then it pulls back. And normally what I find, just as a rule of thumb, the distance it goes above is roughly a bit of a guide stick of the distance it can come below here. We're looking for a three-wave pattern, and then we're looking for support back on this level over here. So that's what we're looking for. Really, this 15,000 or this level, this price point, becomes the balance point within this whole space here. And that's what we're looking for at the moment, just to give you that. The other point here, too, is that um, that we've got trades on for this market. Now, with the trades here, uh, we've, we've been long. Uh, let's just drill this up a little bit. We went first long here, another position here, another position here, another position there. And we can move the stop up to this point. In fact, we can now move the stop way up into this space here for that. Um, we will trade to the 1650 and take profit there. And um, yes, so that's that. Now, as I've mentioned before, is that I am not trading these trades here. My game in here is that um, each week, I this little blue dollar signs here, I don't have a little Bitcoin sign yet, but um, uh, that's where I buy 1,000 Australian dollars uh, each week. So an Australian dollar is about 70 cents to a US dollar, so it's 30% less. Um, I've bought 7,000 of them so far. I've actually bought another 10,000 uh, here the time that order goes through. That will be around the $15,000 mark, above or below, doesn't matter, um, because I'm not selling. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's how many Bitcoin I've got here now with this. I've got 7,000 Australian dollars, but I bought another 10,000 here, so that will bump up to 17,000. Um, I'll probably drop some other lots in there as well, but my main strategy was really to um, to put uh, $1,000 a week in there, but it's not really quite enough, you know. I mean, e even, I think, from all these, th these thousands here that I've put in, I think I'm only probably a couple of thousand dollars up um, here, if that if that, you know, so it's a very slow, uh, well, it's slow profits for me because I'm normally using leverage. So um, I find it a bit sort of a bit slow. But um, but anyway, um, you know, and even that that uh, will give me 17,000. That doesn't even buy me one Bitcoin. So um, obviously this is all in US dollars. So I'd need about 24, 23, probably current price to to buy one Bitcoin. So, you know, I really want to I really want to get at least one Bitcoin uh, at these current levels, you know. Um, hopefully uh, I'll try and get um, uh, five Bitcoin uh, stacked up uh, in, in due course. Um one of the other things here, you know, the bearish count that, that folks are talking about with the triangles and all the rest of it, um, we can definitely say that this, normally when you get support on, on 10, we'll go up to 20. That's the normal thing I find with the levels and stocks, just the normal nature of human beings. Um, so getting, getting support on 10 normally takes us to 20. And getting support on third at 13, which is kind of the top of group one, that that also tells me that we're, we're going higher. Now, going from 10 to 20, the biggest problem along the way is normally the 15. So this is what we're seeing at the 15. Now, at the 15, we may get this, we'll get this one and two occurring here as well. Um, but I really just see all of these as buying opportunities on the on the pullbacks. That's all I see them as. Um, so yeah, unless we unless we get a strong impulse wave coming down here, then we'll stay bullish with all of this. Uh, right. 
despite the snuff waffling, let's just go. I haven't done any other charts in here. I've just been using the tick chart to look at all of this. So we're going to have to bring in some more data. I don't want it for weeks enough. Might just bring in a bit more if I can here. All that jump to another time thing. Okay, that's good enough. So it's kind of where we picked off, like picked up from last time. So what I mentioned before, I just don't like this wave four here. It's really small, and you know it just doesn't sort of do it for me, and uh, so on. Um, but um, let's just work with this. So I'm just going to get rid of that volume. There's a good bit more space in. So this move here counts as uh, as a corrective move, as three waves. So I have to label it wave one here. It's possible that um, I could put wave four here, but um, yeah, I could. Do, but at the end of the day, it just doesn't really matter for, for that point, right? Because this is corrective and we've made new highs here. And so I need to look at this as one here and two here. And then I'm just looking at if I can fit it all in here and take a good look at it. We're looking at this here as well, wave one and two and three and four and five here for wave three and then back for wave four here. Now, normally I would count this because we've had this move back here. I would normally count this as one and two and one and two and then one and two here or uh, or even um, uh yeah, I'd look at all of this as just the third wave. So, but because it's pulled back so far, um, I need to count it like this here. So this move uh, down through here, we could look at this as an impulsive move to the downside as well. We've got we've got five waves in this little sequence uh, here for this. So this move through here, it looks a little bit corrective. Um, overlapping wave structures. If we had to count it down as five waves, it would be wave one here, two here, three here, or oh, let me think, an A and a B and a C. Uh, yeah, so, see, it's difficult to count it as an impulse wave here. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Um, <clears throat> you know, I can't, I can't, uh, could I put that here? as an A, B, and C. Yeah, I could do that. That would work that way. But what I'm trying to point out here, as I just mentioned, is it's difficult to count this down as one and two and three, A, B, C for four here and down for five here. Well, that doesn't even work here. So it's a typical sort of wave four correction playing out here as some sort of corrective pattern. Now, I may not have this right. And also, too, this wave four may get even uglier here. But for us as, um, as long traders, I just see this as, a, as an opportunity to go long. And the other point here is that, um, you know, if I was trading on leverage, would I go short here? No, I wouldn't. I would wait for a pattern to occur here. So um, I can't draw on this side of the tick chart, but I can draw over here part on the, on the left-hand side of the price. So I would be looking for some sort of, you know, first high above the level, some type of corrective move, and then sort of looking for the support and going long here for these guys. So that's what I'd be looking for in this space over here. This little move here it does appear that it's impulsive to the upside here, doesn't it? So, you know, getting back on <clears throat> getting back on the horse here, which is the 15,000, um, would be heading back up from that point and we'll go up to 1650. Um, yeah. That's how I see it anyway. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that because this video has gone for well over 20 minutes and uh, I know folks don't like, they want all the answers within five minutes. But um, I wanted to talk about the volume a little bit today and talk about a few other things because I think the video, I do the videos so they're, they're a little bit educational, you know, and I like putting my money on the line as well with folks. Um, it just makes it a bit more sort of interesting. Um, yeah, we're all in this boat together so we can either float or we can sink. Okay, adios, cheers.